to our missionary stories for children, but these stories are for all ages, and they are the very best. And we learn a lot ourselves when we teach about missionaries that have taught other children. This one is Nathan Finds New Life in Jerusalem. You are going to love this story. He was 12 years old, Nathan was, and his grandfather and his grandmother lived in Israel. They had been to Chicago to stay with them for a year with his father and his mother. He was the only child. And he was looking forward to the Bar Mitzvah. When they are 13, this is when they become man. That's what the Jews believe. And when you hear what happens with this young boy, you are just going to be so excited because they had been there for a year and now they're on their way back to Israel. And he has tears because he doesn't want his grandfather and grandmother to leave. They had become the very best friends and his grandfather always taught him to think, boy, think. And this is what we are to do. We are to think. In fact, we are to meditate on the Word of God day and night, and to do according to all that he has commanded us. Then he will make our way prosperous. Then we shall have good success. That's God's way. And his word is the only way that we can live. So I'm going to read in Deuteronomy today because we are talking about Deuteronomy, first five books of the Bible. The first Bible verse is Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is the most important Bible verse for you to know that God has no beginning and no ending. In the beginning, God created. So we're going to learn the first five books of the Bible today, and I hope you know them, but if you don't, you can teach, if you do, you can teach them to someone else. This is a great commandment God gave to the Jewish people. And this is in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 5. Hear, O Lord, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and thy, with all thy might. And then he teaches us in the New Testament, and thy neighbor as ourselves. Oh, if we could just do this one command, think of how different life would be for us. He says, in instructions and warnings for parents. Now, I want you to listen to this, all parents. Now, we're going to read this more and more so you can know these truths and what God has commanded us as parents. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Now, just think about that. These words shall be in thine heart. And listen, now this is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently. Now this is amazing. Now listen at this. This is for every parent in the world. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest 
in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So this is to meditate on his word day and night. And this is being obedient to what God commands. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on the gates. This is something that is the greatest need today for our children that we are to teach them, diligently teach these to our children, hide that word in their hearts. This is lacking just as much as thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, how we love thy word. We want thee to teach us thy word and hide it in our hearts that we will not sin against thee. We thank thee for the word of God. We thank thee for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. We thank thee and praise thee that we desire to obey. This is the greatest need today. So we're asking that thou will guide us into all truths that we will trust in thee with all of our heart. We will trust in thee with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge thee and thou will direct our paths. So save 100 fold today because this is all about Christ. Everything in this book from beginning to end is about Christ. And we are to desire to know him. And this is the only way that anyone can get to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ that came down from heaven, went to the cross to die for us, and is back in heaven today preparing a place for each of us. Accept this gift today. We're praying for 100 fold. We're asking the Spirit of God to conquer all sin in our lives as believers and to conquer all satanic powers, all demonic spirits against our children today and against this nation and against Israel, against our armed forces, against our policemen and our firemen, that they will be protected by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and the blood that covers and the divine protection, the angelic host. And we're rejoicing in what thou art going to do in each of our lives as we grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as we talk about this little boy, this is the most exciting thing. And you know, the Jews had to study the first five books of the Bible. So he was studying to prepare for his bar mitzvah. But when his grandmother and grandfather were at the airport in Chicago preparing to go back to Israel, he was crying. But he was ashamed to show his tears to the family. He said, this is a manly to show our tears. But then his grandfather saw him over there. Now, this is something that I want all of you to listen to, and I want you to obey this command. He, he dressed differently than the, his mom and dad that lived in America. And he was really thinking all the time. He wanted to know why they wore the clothes that they did, and his mom and dad wore the clothes that we wear. You see, this boy had all kinds of questions. And everybody was looking at his grandfather. Now, his grandfather, as you can see, he had these curls here. And they were called, they came down to his shoulders, and they were called forelocks. And he had a black hat with a rim. And he had a black coat, a long coat, and black pants, and black shoes, and black socks. 
and a white shirt. And people would look at him strangely. Now, just because someone dresses different or someone looks different, I want you to know that you are never to laugh at them. You children are never to laugh at another person, regardless of what they look like, regardless of how they dress. Because God looks on the heart. He only looks on the heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. So he knows what you're thinking when you look at another person that way. So he told his, his grandson, he said, why don't you come over with the rest of the family? And he said, I was ashamed of my tears. He said, look at my tears. You're not to be ashamed of tears. That shows that you are going to be a man in one year. And you are not to be ashamed of your tears. And this is the great need today also. Men are to weep just like women over all the evil forces around us, over the lost children in the world, over people that are going to an eternal hell. So he told him that he had a secret for him. Now, first of all, he told him that he shouldn't be ashamed of tears, and neither are you. Jesus wept. So he told him he had something. He has said, I know that you, since you're going to be a man, he called him his Kadesh, and he said, I know you're going to be a man in another year. And he said, I have got a very, very good secret for you. And I know you can keep secrets. He said, oh, yes, grandfather, I have kept lots of secrets. He said, just be quiet, my son. I want to tell you, and I have, know that this, you can't talk because I have to get on that plane. And your grandmother's already nervous because I'm over here talking. She's first in line waiting for, saving a place for me. So he said, I know that next year you are going to be in Jerusalem for your bar mitzvah. And he said, don't think about the money. The money will be there. And I don't want you to tell any person that you are going to have your bar mitzvah in Jerusalem like other boys at the Welling Wall. Oh, he was so excited. And then his dad came up and he said, is your last goodbye for the, your grandson and not for me? He said, oh yes, my last goodbye is for my grandson. So he told him to go on because his mother was waiting and he didn't want his mother to worry. But as soon as he got there, his mother was, his grandmother was scolding his grandfather, but he didn't pay any attention. And they were laughing at her clothes also because when she was married, this was another thing that happened to the ultra-Orthodox Jews. She had to have her hair cut off before she married, and then she had to have a wig, and she wore this scarf, and she wore a long dress. And he did not understand this. Little Nathan did not understand this. But he knew that they were the very best grandmother and grandfather in the world. How he loved them and could even say they were his friends. So after they left, his mother and his father thought that he was sad because they were leaving. Because he told his grandson at, before he left, I want you to come to Jerusalem because this is where the Messiah is coming. He said, but grandfather, the Messiah has already come. He said, foolishness, foolishness. Don't listen to that foolishness. He said, the Messiah is coming to Jerusalem. After they left, he kept thinking, where did I hear this? That the Messiah had already come. 
and he was sad, trying to remember where he had heard this news. So, all of a sudden, he was thinking about something that his grandfather had told him when he was here. He said, Jews really think. And he, he really was trying to think everything through that his grandfather had told him. He said, when we were Eastern in Eastern Europe in this little village, he said the officials told us to all paint our houses. And he said, the reason we were to paint our houses, there were government officials coming. And he said, all of us Jews started putting up stores and places, things that we could sell, because this was in 1914. And we knew that there was going to be war because the soldiers would be close by and they would be buying all of our goods. That is really what happened, his grandfather said. You see, you have to think. You have to think. So we were all right in doing what we did. Everyone painted their houses. And he was just so amazed at all that his grandfather told him. So he was thinking about the Messiah coming. But all of a sudden, one day, he thought, I know where I heard that Messiah was coming. It was Happy Day Club. The boys and girls, we went down this street one day. They wanted me to go down the street with them. And they said, oh, Nathan, come on in. You're going to love this. Come on in. And he wouldn't go in. But he stayed outside and listened through a window. And he said, I know where I heard this. So he started thinking, I'm going to go back every day and see if I can find that house and the street that we went to. He went back all the time, right down that street. And one day he went back and he saw the sign out again on a Friday. He had been by that house every day trying to find the house. And they said to him, come on in, Nathan, you're going to love this. So Nathan had had just enough of God's word from what he heard from that teacher. Now, I want all of you parents, me included, grandchildren, to start thinking about how much time we spend with them that we can give them God's word. We must give them God's word. So here's what happened. This time he said, I'm going to go in. I have to know if this is true. So we went in and all the little boys and girls that were there were so excited. And she said, today we're going to have a lesson on Moses and Aaron. She said, do any of you know where Moses and Aaron, the story is in the Bible? And Nathan raised his hands. Oh, yes, I know. It's in the Torah. And the children looked at him. They had never heard of the Torah, T-O-R-A-H, before. And that is the first five books of the Bible. That's what the Jews call it. She knew that this boy had been studying because even before his grandfather left, he said, study the Torah study the Torah. And she said, boys and girls, don't laugh because that's what the Jews call the first five books that Moses wrote. Now, do you know those first five books? Well, I can't sing, but I can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let us sing the books of Moses, of Moses, of Moses. Let us sing the books of Moses for he wrote the law. First Genesis, second Exodus, third Leviticus, fourth Numbers, and the fifth is Deuteronomy, the last of them all. That is the Torah, the first five books that Moses wrote. This is something you need every day to learn from the Bible. Every day you need to learn something from this book. So you see, that's teaching our children and our grandchildren, our foster children, whomever 
is in our homes, we are to teach them. So then she started telling about Moses and Aaron, and she began to tell him the story of Jesus Christ. And he did not like that story at all because he had never mentioned Jesus' name. So she saw that he did not like what she was teaching. But afterwards, after they were finished with the lesson on Moses and Aaron, and what happened to Moses, how he was kept by his parents, and they were killing all of the children in those days, and he, the boys, and they put him in an ark, and Pharaoh's daughter found him, and God spared him for the purpose of leading the children of Israel. So he, afterwards, he stayed, and when he stayed, after that, it was the most amazing thing in the world. She saw that he had questions. And she said, Nathan, would you like to stay afterwards? I will answer whatever questions you have. So he stayed. And while he stayed, she told him about her being a Jew. And because he knew she knew too much about the Bible. And he said, how can you be a Jew? And she said, and I am a Jewish Christian. He said, I thought all Gentiles were Christians. She said, just because you are a Jew doesn't mean you can't become a Christian. Just because a Gentile is a Christian, that doesn't mean all are Christians. Because every person has to be born again by the Spirit of God. And he said, why do you worship three gods? She said, we do not worship three gods. There is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then he had her read from this book in Deuteronomy that we read at the beginning of this story. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. So she said, well, let me read to you from Isaiah. And she said, this is from your Bible. And she re read to him Isaiah chapter 53. And it says in here that this is all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. And he said, you deceive me. He said, that is not in the Old Testament. And he, she said, yes, it is. And she showed him, it was Isaiah, that he had written this 700 years before Christ came. And then she said, when he came, he came from heaven to die on the cross. And then he went back to heaven and he's there today preparing a place for us. Today, he's our great high priest. He's coming to reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is what the Jews are looking for, their Messiah of the Old Testament. And he was remembering everything she said. You see, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word is Messiah. Christ is the New Testament word, and that means that he is Jesus that saved us. Christ is his heavenly name. 
and Jesus is his earthly name, and he is the anointed one. And when she, he, I mean, this boy is, I mean, he is just can't understand it because she's telling him all of these things that he had never heard before. And then he got angry. He said, you deceived me again. And she said, no, I did not deceive you. Let me read from John chapter 1. Now, this is the New Testament that they do not study. They only study the Old Testament. And she said to him, God's word teaches us that Jesus came unto his own, and his own received him not. Oh, he couldn't believe this. And he said, I am going home because the Sabbath is begins tonight at sundown. I am going home because I have to go home, get a bath, and get my clothes, the clothes that I wear to the synagogue. And he was angry, and he did not, was not nice at all to her. And he left, and after he left all the way home, he was remembering everything she had told him. Then when he got to the door, now remember, they were to put these on the door of their homes. He had to touch the scriptures that were there on the door knowing that these scriptures were in there and they were to be studied and learned and memorized. And he went in and his mother said, Shalom, Shalom. And I, I, I have your clothes already ready. And then his father came in later and he had driven a long ways to get there so him and his son could go to the synagogue on the Sabbath Eve, before the Sabbath on Saturday. So his dad and him came, got ready. They said, Shalom, Shalom, which means peace, peace. Isn't that wonderful that we are to show God's perfect peace when we are meeting other people? They are to manifest that Christ is our peace in everything that we do. So him and his father were on their way to the synagogue, and he was thinking, oh, I wonder where grandmother and grandfather are tonight. He said, well, it's 7 o'clock here. And he said, that's six hours difference than ours, so I would hope they would be sleeping. So he still missed his grandfather and his grandmother, but he had this wonderful secret that he couldn't tell anyone. So when they came home from the synagogue, the mother is the queen of the Sabbath on the Sabbath Eve. And she had their dinner prepared with bread and fish. And he took the napkin off of the bread and gave to each one. She cut the fish's head off and handed it to him. And you're going to find out next week what happens with Nathan and his family and what happens in Jerusalem. Missionary, be a missionary.